Hi everybody, one of the main perks in my job is that I get to buy and test out lots of the brand new makeup releases that have just dropped here in the UK and I have been doing a lot of that recently. So in this video, I am gonna be sharing my thoughts and feelings on five of the products that I have been testing within an inch of their lives. These five products have had a lot of hype surrounding them. There is a lot of buzz about these products. So many people say they are excellent, but are they as good as everybody claims or are they seriously overrated? We will find out. Some of them I absolutely adore. Others, not so much. So word of warning, there will be some gushing happening in this video because you all know how I get when I find an absolute diamond that will eventually end up in my favourite straw behind me. I may get a little over animated, but on the flip side, you all know how I get when I don't like something as well. I didn't like. No, no, no. Oh. So let's get on with it. So if you're new here, hi, my name's Gemma. I upload new videos on YouTube every single week and I would absolutely love it if you would come and join the Pampered Wolf Pack at any point in this video. Click on that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. So first product, this is a waterproof liquid liner from Benefit. It's the Their Real Extreme Precision Liner. And uh, after my experience with the Bad Gal Bang Waterproof Mascara, I did not think I was going to like this product because quite frankly, I didn't think it was gonna be waterproof because the Bad Gal Bang Waterproof Mascara is heavily flawed in that area, but I really like this. It is waterproof, so that box is ticked. Well done, they have delivered on a promise. I'm impressed. Also, this stays put for an incredibly long amount of time. If you put lots of running water over the top of this liner, it will not budge. The only time I found that it moved is when it was completely wet, if you then went to dry it and rub it with a towel, it would come off on the towel. But if you just pat it, it stays in place. So I really like this. The other thing that I like about it is with other waterproof liners that I've tried in the past, if you try to go over the liner a little bit to deepen the pigment, or if you've made a little bit of an error and you need to go over and touch up, sometimes the waterproof liner removed itself on the little bit that you'd applied already. And that does not happen with this in my experience. So only positives to say about it. I really like the tip of this pen. It's flexible enough so it makes it very, very easy to use and beginner friendly, but it's sturdy enough so you can still be extremely accurate without smudging all over the place. The tip is very fine so you can get a very nice, clean, thin line. But also if you lay it on the side, you can get a very chunky line very, very quickly. So with a little bit of practice, it's extremely easy to use in both scenarios, thin line and thick line. I really like it. Moving on to the next product, I'm not quite sure how long I'm gonna be able to hold this up without blinding you all because this is a mirrored front and it's incredibly reflective, but I will give it a good go. This is from Patrick Tarr and it's the Major Dimension two palette. This has been long awaited and there is a lot of buzz surrounding this product. Everybody thinks it is amazing. For me, firstly, let's talk about the packaging. So it's very beautiful. It's mirrored. It's chunky, it's well put together, but for me it's completely impractical. I've cleaned this three times already today and every time I touch it, more fingerprints arrive. I'm a bit of a clean freak. I don't wanna spend my day cleaning my makeup products. I have enough on cleaning my makeup brushes. I don't wanna have to have a Sunday filled with cleaning my makeup products as well. So although I do think it's beautiful, completely impractical. And I know we shouldn't focus a lot on the packaging, but when we're talking about luxury items, items and this does cost a pretty penny, you are paying for the packaging. A lot of the money that you're shelling out to buy this product is going on the packaging, so we can't just disregard it completely. Let's talk about the shadows though. I'm just going to uncover these cream shadows in the corner. The colour story is 
lovely. I will show you the swatches. There are two cream shadows. These can be used in one of three ways. They can be used as cream shadows, they can be used as bases for the rest of the shadows, or you can use them as liners. I've used them every single one of those ways, and I've got to say I'm not a huge fan. I find them slightly too emollient, and they don't dry down on the lid as quickly as I would like. When I'm using them as a liner, for instance, I can go over the same area to just soften it off a little bit and it removes completely from the surface of the eyelid. So on that instance, I'm not a huge fan. Using it underneath my eyeshadow as a base, also not a massive fan. I prefer my actual base products that are made for that purpose. And using them as shadows, they're actually quite nice used as shadows, but again, they don't dry down that quickly. They can crease into the eyelid folds a little bit. You do have to be quite careful. So as far as these two cream shadows go, I'm not a massive fan. The rest of the palette, stunning. The matte shades in here are supreme. They are soft and creamy and buttery and super pigmented and yet very easy to blend out. It is effortless. I also love the metallic shimmers. In fact, when I first saw the metallic shimmers and actually touched them and felt the consistency, I thought of the Huda Beauty Nude Palette. Very, very similar look, and yet swatch side by side, they are nothing like, but the consistency and the texture, very similar. Also that multi-tonal effect, also very similar, but the shades, actually nothing like. So I really, really like it. I have got it on today. I think it is stunning. Um, I will be using it again. I'm not usually a big fan of lots of pinky hues on my eyes, and this is obviously a more pinky toned palette, much more so than his Major Dimension 1 palette, which is a warmer toned palette. However, because this is multi-dimensional, because you get flecks of different shades, in those metallic shades. I think this is workable whether you've got a cool undertone or a warm undertone. Definitely workable and yeah, those mattes. Oh. So is it worth the hype? Well, for me, there are negatives to this palette, like I said at the beginning of this segment with regards to the cream shadows and the packaging, but really it's not about me whether this is gonna be worth the hype. You will know if this is your color story and this doesn't scream to me that I want to go out and purchase it, but if this is your color story, the textures and the quality of the formulas are stunning. So if this is your color story, I highly recommend it. For me, I probably won't use it massively, but I am gonna go out and buy the Major Dimension 1 palette on the back of this one and hope that the formulas are just as good. So take that as you will. I'm undecided. Let's talk about the foundation that I have on my skin today, which is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation. I think everybody and their dog has already tried this in the US, but it is a very recent launch here in the UK, so I've only had my hands on it for around about three weeks now. I've been trying it and I've really put it through its paces. I've tried it really quite a medium to full coverage. I've tried it like today, which is more of a light coverage. I've used a sponge. I've used a brush pretty much every single which way I have loved apart from the medium to full coverage but we all know that's not my preference anyway I just thought it looked a little heavy I find this is most flattering sort of light to medium coverage oh, I really like it on my skin I have it on today I don't think this is dewy or luminous or radiant. I just think this is the most soft satin finish, which is incredibly flattering and very natural looking on my skin. It does have a punch of coverage if you require it, but it's very easy to sheer out, which I was really quite surprised about. I find that this airbrushes slightly, don't expect miracles, it's not a matte foundation, but I do think it airbrushes my skin and makes it look way more perfected than it actually is. It's very good at evening out my skin tone and it lasts. Now for me, it does look 
a lot dewier as the day goes on but I tend not to powder this in place or use a setting spray because I don't feel the need and I don't mind it looking dewier throughout the day. If you don't like a dewier look throughout the day I would set this in place in your oilier areas but I really like it seriously like it. Now I have passed some of this on to my mum who will let me know in good time if she likes it on her over 65 skin, whether it works for her, whether it lasts all day, whether it looks really flattering. So I will let you know that in a later video, but I really like it. Now, if you do have super sensitive skin, this does contain quite a bit of alcohol, which doesn't worry me whatsoever because I just make sure I treat my skin prior to applying this with some really good moisturizers. And it also contains a fragrance. So just putting that out there, if they are your trigger ingredients, probably not going to be for you but even though this has quite a high level of alcohol within the formula I don't find this difficult to work with. One of those formulas that dries down really quickly so you have to work really fast otherwise it doesn't blend out very well. This is not like that at all but again this is my experience with this. We're not all going to have the same reaction, we're not all going to like the same thing but I definitely like this. Now my shade is 1N14. That is my summer shade. I very rarely need summer shades because I plaster SPF 50 on my skin all day. It is only because I've been away on holiday that I am the shade 1N14. If you are my shade twin, Pretty much all year round I am guessing, and don't quote me on this, I will be the shade porcelain, which is I think 1N10. I'll link it in the description box. Let's talk about the Dior Backstage Flash Perfector Concealer. On paper, this is the best concealer in the world. It's waterproof, it should be high coverage, have a natural finish, and it's alcohol-free, got loads of shea butter in there and glycerin, so it should be really hydrating and nourishing. The only negative on paper is that it's got a fragrance in it, but it's Dior. Everything Dior's got a fragrance in, so I got over myself pretty quickly. I was super excited excited to try this out because you all know that one of my ride or die foundations for if I want my foundation to be waterproof, budge proof, sweat proof, transfer proof is the Dior Backstage foundation. I love that stuff. It is just gold and also looks really natural on my skin. This however <laughs> I didn't like. I really wanted to like this and I was so disappointed. So I bought two shades. I bought the shade 1N and I also bought the shade 0N and thought I would have to mix the two together when actually the 1N is, is perfection on me. I can easily wear that on its own. I love the application it's got instead of a little doe foot applicator it's actually got a little brush which reminds me of the NARS creamy under eye color corrector which I also adore. This is really great for precision concealing so really nice for underneath the eyes and spot concealing on paper but um, in practice it goes on beautifully it's creamy it's quite high coverage. It didn't wow me with the coverage, but it, the coverage is definitely there. I would say a really good medium coverage and it looked superb underneath my eyes. But my major negative with this is that it did not look the same three hours after application as it did on first application. Again, first application, beautiful, smooth, looked nourishing and hydrating, but this faded on me. It's, it lost a lot of the coverage and it went a little powdery and it just did not look flattering after three or four hours and I had the same experience all week regardless of what I teamed with it. I even didn't put any skincare on. <gasps> underneath my eyes and put this straight onto bare skin just to see if it was my skincare that was reacting badly with the concealer. Apparently not. This just didn't like me. I would love to know if this is any of your ride or die concealers. How you make it work for you? Does it just work? Because I was so disappointed. I loved this when I first applied it and then three hours later I looked in a mirror and did not recognize myself. <laughs> this is a real bust for me and I am gutted. 
And finally, let's talk about the new Maybelline liquid lipsticks. These are the Superstay Vinyl Ink liquid lipsticks and everybody is talking about these. I don't think I've heard a negative word surrounding this product. So I was eager to get my hands on four of these. I've gone for 35 Cheeky, 20 Koi, 15 Peachy, which I have on today, and 25 Red Hot. These are supposed to be transfer resistant, extremely long lasting, really high pigmented, also a high shine finish, and these aren't supposed to dry out your lips. Forgive me for being a little bit skeptical, but I think I've only tried two liquid lipsticks that were affordable that did not dry out my lips. So I went into this quite hesitantly, not expecting to like it and have a positive experience. Usually liquid lipsticks, mostly affordable ones, but some high-end ones as well, have the tendency to completely dry out my lips and strip my lips of natural moisture and make them look hideous, not only for the rest of the day, but also for two to three days after, because I'm having to really treat my lips and rehydrate them in the days to come. These did not do that. These did not dry out my lips. They didn't pump my lips full of nourishment and hydration, but they did not dry my lips out either. They also didn't make my lips feel chalky or dry. My lips do feel like they have a creamy matte lipstick on them. They don't feel like they've got a really creamy nourishing lipstick on, they feel like they've got a creamy matte lipstick on. I think there is a bit of a difference. You can definitely feel it on your lips so it's not completely lightweight, but um, I really like them and I do think they fit a purpose. I don't think they're overly shiny on my lips, there's definitely a soft shine effect, but not like a gloss effect like on the adverts that I've been seeing. I was expecting something slightly shinier, but that has not disappointed me at all. I actually prefer this level of shine on my lips. If I wanted more, I would add a gloss over the top. These are long lasting. These are transfer resistant. They are super pigmented. They deliver on every level. <laughs> <laughs> and they are affordable. Another great feature of the formula of this liquid lipstick that I really like is that although the pigment is super rich and really long lasting, of course it's going to fade and this one fades evenly over the entirety of the lips. So your lipstick isn't going to look patchy throughout the day, which I really love because we all know I don't like to have my head in a mirror constantly checking if my lipstick or anything on my face is still intact. So I would say if I apply this first thing in the morning, I will have to reapply at lunchtime and then again, maybe at the end of the day, but it's seriously long lasting and just, really, really beautiful formula. So that's it for this video. I really hope you found it helpful. Three products that I think are definitely worth the hype. One that I'm a little undecided about and one that I definitely no. <laughs> no, no, no. Anyway, do share your experiences with all of the five products that I've talked about in this video in the comment section. Let everybody know how you've got on with them. How have they worn on your skin? Do you like them? Do you really not get on with them? Please let everybody know. Hope you've really enjoyed this video and hope to see you all in the next one. Bye everyone.